Here they have us predicting the relative strength of the dispersion force between molecules. So this is all about dispersion forces. <clears throat> now, what do we know about dispersion forces? Well, their play is an intermolecular attractive force between all atoms, ions, and molecules, okay? How can I increase the strength of a dispersion force? Well, generally, what we know is that the strength of a dispersion force, of, of London dispersion forces increases so increases with more electrons. And it's as simple as that. We call that polarizability. Okay? And polarizability increases the more electrons you have. So it should be fairly easy to... Um, to determine which one of these compounds in each of these three scenarios will have the higher boiling point. How? Well, think about what we know about boiling point, right? If I'm going to boil a liquid and make it phase change to a gas, that means that I, I broken those attractive forces between the liquid molecules, right? If you can break the attractive forces between the liquid molecules, then they can break free and phase change to the gaseous state, which we, which where we have less um, uh, intermolecular forces there because they're moving faster and more freely. So if I have these two compounds, the question is, which one has the higher boiling point? Well, the, the one that's going to have the higher boiling point or require more energy to break its attractive forces is going to be the one with the higher polarizability or the greatest number of electrons. So this is fairly easy to do. I've got SiH4. If I go to the periodic table, one atom of silicon has 14 electrons. Each hydrogen atom has one. That's 18 electrons total, right? 18 here. And if I go to PBH4, or well, if I find lead, lead is going to be here. So 82 plus 4 electrons from each hydrogen, that's 86 electrons. So which one is going to have the highest polarizability? That's going to be PBH4 because it has the greatest number of electrons. The higher the polarizability, the greater the dispersion force or attraction between molecules, and the harder it's going to be to phase change it from liquid to gas. So that means this is going to have the higher boiling point. Let's do the same for the second set. We've got CSE2. So I'll go here. Here's my carbon, six electrons, and then selenium, 34 for each. So that's 68 plus six, that's 74 electrons total. And then if I go to C2H4, that is 12 from the carbon, C2, H4, that's four, that's 16. So this one will have the higher boiling point. And then if I'm looking at molecular bromine versus molecular nitrogen, if I check my periodic table, I've got 35 for each bromine uh, atom times two, that would be 70, okay? 70 electrons in that molecule total and into there's nitrogen I have 14 total so the one with the higher boiling point is going to be the one with the greatest number of electrons and the highest polarizability yielding the strongest dispersion forces that would be that one